Praise the Lord. Welcome to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Uh, let's go to Luke's Gospel. I'm going to read a portion of Scripture that we read last Sunday. Some things that God's put on my heart that I believe is going to really encourage you and strengthen you in your walk of faith as we approach um, the new year. Amen. I believe that God wants us to approach the new year with expectation. That is so vital. As we close out the old year and approach the new year, that we approach the new year with expectation. Okay, Luke chapter 2. <clears throat> Let's uh, begin reading in uh, verse 1. I'm going to read several verses here. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, in other words, his fiance, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 8, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch or the flock by night. Verse 9, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Now, good tidings there means good news. So this angel, the Lord then, was announcing good news of great joy. Amen. Which shall be to all people. Verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And of course, we learned last Sunday that the Greek word for Christ is Christos which means the anointed one and his anointing. And the word for, Greek word for Savior there means a deliverer. So, so when Jesus was born into the earth, it's saying this, that God sent us a deliverer whom he anointed. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. Verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying. Verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now notice here, in the King James, it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So, notice what it does not say. It does not say goodwill among men. It says goodwill toward men. So, in other words, the war between heaven and earth is over. Once Jesus arrived, the war between heaven and earth ended. It was canceled. <laughs> Amen. It was obliterated. Praise the Lord. So, in other words, God was declaring, when Jesus was born in that manger, God was declaring that there is now peace between heaven and earth. In other words, God is saying, I'm no longer going to hold your sins 
and your trespasses against you, for I've sent to you this day a Savior. I've sent to you this day a Deliverer. I've sent to you this day a Savior and a Deliverer whom I have anointed. Praise God. Amen? So, a Savior now has been born. A Deliverer has been born. God's anointed one has been born and is alive upon the earth. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? So the angel of the Lord then is making this announcement. He's announcing this good news, praise the Lord. This is good news to all the world. Amen? Now, <clears throat> let me read to you what verse 14 says in the New Living Translation. This is really, really powerful. This is the New Living Translation, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. Ooh, I like that. So in other words, this angel is declaring that when Jesus was born of a virgin, that favor has now been released from heaven to the earth. Is that not exciting? Hallelujah. So, in other words, when Jesus came into the earth, God was extending favor to all of mankind. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in other words, this angel is declaring that God is not mad at anyone. God is not upset with anyone. God is not holding anyone's trespasses against them any longer. For I have sent unto you a Savior. I have sent unto you a Deliverer. Someone whom I have anointed, and through this anointed one, favor is now being extended to all of mankind. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? Praise God. Now, Jesus declared the same thing couple of chapters later, once his ministry was launched. So he went from the manger then to his public ministry, okay, and made the same announcement, essentially, that this angel made. Now go to the fourth chapter of Luke's gospel, and you'll see it. You'll see it. So, Jesus here in the fourth chapter of Luke is confirming or substantiating, if you will, um, what this angel had just announced at his birth. This is really, really powerful. Really, really powerful. All right, Luke chapter 4. Uh, let's begin reading in verse, verse uh, 16. It says, Jesus came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read, and there, verse 17, and there delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Now remember that word Christ, the Greek word for Christ in, in Luke, the, the first chapter. I'm sorry, the second chapter is Christos, which means the anointed one and his anointing. 
Now here he said, Spit the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Do you see that? To do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Isn't that powerful? Now, Jesus here is proclaiming the, the same thing, essentially, that the angel of the Lord announced at his birth. This is really, really powerful. Now, let me read to you verses 18 and 19 from the New Living Translation. This is just so good. It's so good. You ready for this? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good news. See, the word gospel means good news. Well, I love that. He has anointed me to preach good news to whom? The poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. Wow. Are any of you being held captive in some area of your life? You're about to be released. Jesus said so. These aren't my words. I'm simply telling you what he told me to tell you and reading to you what the Bible says. If you're being held captive, in any area of your life, I have good news for you. You're about to be released. So it says here that he sent me to proclaim the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the downtrodden, have you felt downtrodden ever? That the downtrodden will be freed from their oppressors. Debt can be very oppressive. You're about to be freed. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This is verse 19 now in the, New Living, in the New Living Translation. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when God sent Jesus to the earth, he released his favor to all of mankind through the anointed one. Amen. Can you say amen to that? So, let me say this. For this to work, you have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to bring your words in line with God's word. You have to bring your thinking in line with, God, with God's word. We have to receive these words that I read to you by faith. Amen. It's so vitally important that as we close out the old year, 2020, and approach the new year, 2021, that we approach the new year with expectation. Amen. I'll, I'll say this. I believe that December is going to be a month to remember. And then January will be a month of justice. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Because God is about to turn some things around. Amen. So don't hang your head in doubt. Lift your voice and shout. Because God's about to straighten some things out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last scripture. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse, verses 1 and 2 says in the King James, Therefore, being justified by faith. How? Have you, have you been justified? By faith, amen. In other words, justify comes from the word just. It's just as if you've never sinned. Therefore, 
being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also, verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. What is grace? It's favor you do not deserve. Favor, you do not deserve. So we have favor, don't we? Where we stand and rejoice. Say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice in hope. Say in hope. The word hope there means expectation. Expectation of what? The glory of God. That's the goodness of God. Amen. As we close out the old year and approach the new year, get your expectation up as high as it will go. Be expecting God to turn some things around. Amen. Amen. Expect God to change rules, to change laws in your behalf, just because you have favor with him. Expect things that have not been working out to all of a sudden, all of a sudden, turn in your favor. I'm talking about something that's supernatural. See, favor is part of the blessing. Notice it says here in verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 2, chapter 5, book of Romans. It says the word to rejoice in hope or an expectation of the glory of God. So in other words, we're to celebrate the fact that God is extending his favor toward us. Our celebration is a demonstration of our expectation. Amen. Amen. We're celebrating God's favor that's been extended toward us through the anointed one. Even though we have not seen the promise being fulfilled yet, yet we are approaching it, we're approaching the new year with expectation. And so our celebration is a demonstration of our expectation. Amen. And I just believe that praise God, we're going to see that some things happen in the new year suddenly. It's already started. It's already started. December will be a month to remember. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's stand up. And I want you to, I'm going to speak the word, the word blessing over you. And I want you to receive it with expectation, with expectation, amen, because this is the word for word blessing that God gave to Moses, and Moses gave it to Aaron and his sons, and Aaron and his sons spoke the word for word blessing over the children of Israel, amen, and God never changes, this is still his will for you and for me today. Amen. Amen. So are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the curse of the law from off of every family represented here tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I break every generational curse in Jesus' name. I rebuke curses that have been spoken over them or curses that have come out of their own mouths. I rebuke those curses right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I say and I declare and I decree, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the Lord shall put his name upon you and he will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
Now let's just thank him for it. Let's just thank him for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.